The Lake Champlain Monster Lake Champlain lives or lies between New York and Vermont and extends northward into Canada. It is named after the French explorer Samuel de Champlain, who sailed down the lake 400 years ago, logging all the plants and animals he saw. According to some historians, one of the animals he saw was a sea serpent. The Iroquois Indians, who knew the lake long before Lake Sh before Champlain alive, arrived, also spoke of a large serpent living in the water. Over the years, many more people have reported seeing what has been called the Champlain Sea Serpent or the Lake Champlain Monster. As with the sightings of its Scottish counterpart, Loch Ness, the majority of the sightings in Lake Champlain describe an animal that fits the description of a pleosaur. Champ, as we now call the mystery animal, is said to be 20 to 25 feet in length, making it a slightly smaller version of Scotland's Nessie. And like Nessie, Champ has its believers and its skeptics. Fossils of prehistoric animals in the rocks around Lake Champlain tell us that the lake was once part of a vast inland sea. The totem shows a trilobite fossil and three ancient species of fish that still live in the lake, gar, bowfin, and sturgeon. Much bigger than Loch Ness, Lake Champlain is 120 miles long and 13 miles wide at its widest point, across at its widest point, but it is only half as deep at 400 feet. The deepest water in the canyons and crevices in the vast and mountainous, the deepest water is in the canyons and crevices in the vast and mountainous lake bottom. There are 76 islands and 580 miles of shoreline with scores of shallow bays. In these shallows is an abundance of, aqu an abundance of aquatic life can be found. But could a population of predators as large as the creature we call champ survive just by feeding in the weedy shallows? Aquatic weeds are edible by waterfowl muskrats, deer, moose, and turtles. They also provide shade and hiding for hiding places for insects, crustaceans, fish, and amphibians. The lake's weedy habitats require a lot of sunlight to grow. Curious to see if any weeds or other aquatic food might be growing down deep where there is little or no sunlight, we set out on our boat, Crayfish, to explore. To see the bottom of the lake, you might you either need you need either dive down with a flashlight or lower a light equipped camera. Deanna and I, along with our three hale and hearty grandsons as crew, lowered such a camera to the bottom of the lake, and what we saw amazed us. In water as deep as thirty feet, Large mussels covered every square inch of the bottom. Large freshwater mussels that are food for sturgeon, sheep's head, bass, and catfish. Pleosaurs ate fish. Could they have fed on mollusks like mussels the way seals and otters do? Could an animal like champ be eating mussels as well as fish? I painted this scene at the bottom so uh, bright so you could see the type of bottom we drifted over. Actually, the water at 30 feet of depth is very dark. In the small portion of Lake Champlain that we explored, we discovered a landscape of hills, valleys, flat plains, rocky cliffs, ledges, reefs, and submerged mountains. The underwater mountains, called sea mounts, were carved and created by slow-moving glaciers over 10,000 years ago. The mountains that rise above the earth, the water's surface form the lake's beautiful tree-covered islands. We found deep, wide basins 
that held large schools of fish. We saw places where the ground under deep water gradually sloped upward to form shallow, weedy bays. And we saw that there were crevices in the rocky bottom that create mysteriously deep ravines. Most important, we learned that the lake provides everything an aquatic animal needs. Food, fresh water, shelter under rock formations and inside natural crevices or sunken ships, and a refuge from surface wind and storms. Lake Champlain is an underwater world big enough and rich enough to support a population of large predators, maybe even some as large as pleosaurs. Could they go about their lives most of the time virtually unnoticed by land dwellers like us? They most certainly could. At the end of the day, the crew of the crayfish went over all the things we had learned about the lake. The new weeds, the mussel beds, the sea mounts, and what the islands looked like underwater. We remembered the deep holes we found that harbored large schools of fish. We talked about things each of us saw individually that others might have missed. Everyone was tired from hours for, of looking for champ, both down deep with our underwater camera and on the surface of the lake with our binoculars. We investigated everything that, we, that could have been mistaken for a large creature, such as floating logs or sticks. We saw how the motion of the boats far away could send energy through the water all the way to where we were, creating long, dark, spooky waves resembling a monster. Later that night, as often as I was asked, I told stories about the wildlife I have seen, had seen on the lake, and about the day Deanna and I saw something longer than our boat suddenly emerge just a hundred feet from our bow and swim slowly on the surface before diving back down under. The earth is home to many animals, and they go about their lives regardless of whether or not we know they exist. Right now, a Bigfoot family could be sleeping somewhere in the forest. Champ or Nessie could be swimming in the dark beneath a fisherman's boat. New species of animals are discovered every year in the ocean, in distant rivers, and in remote forests all around the world. Keep an open mind. Today's mystery could be tomorrow's science. You may grow up to be the first marine biologist to, to study the habits and migration patterns of a rediscovered pleosaur or become a conservationist whose job it is to protect the habitat of a newly discovered North American ape. I hope we solve the mysteries of Bigfoot, Champ, and Nessie. And when we do, I hope new mysteries crop up to take their place. We need mystery.